Hello everyone, welcome to Native Mobile Bits. In today's video, let's discuss about coroutines. In this video, we will understand why we need coroutines earlier, what was the alternative to it, how it helps, and this video is going to be a part of our playlist Important Android Topics. So let's start today's video. Let's start from basic, what actually this coroutine means. If you will Google it, you will find that coroutine means a lightweight thread. Now, as the definition says that coroutine is a lightweighted thread, right? That means we already had something called threads, but still we invented coroutines. It is clear that there must be some problem with this existing technology, right? There should be some kind of drawbacks, some kind of problems with threads. That's why we invented coroutines. And in this video, we are going to learn exactly that, that why coroutines are important nowadays and what advantages coroutines have over thread, okay? What coroutines actually bring to the table and then we will learn how to use coroutines in code. Before we get into details with these coroutines, let's understand little bit about threads first. Okay, so threads exist into programming from long back and threads are resource intensive. Okay, that means if you start a thread T1, then you start another thread T2. So both of these threads will take some kind of memory or some resources. And if you want to communicate between these threads, again, a lot of resource will be needed. Okay, so let's say if your memory in your machine is limited and you start multiple threads, your machine will run out of memory, out of memory error. And this is very common and very popular. If you are not using multi-threading properly, you will run into this error. Okay, so with this, we go to know that threads are resource intensive. And if you want to start a load of threads, if you want to communicate between those threads, so load of memory will be needed and which is not ideal scenario. Now we know that there is a problem with threads. If we try to use multiple threads, we will run out of this error and it can lead to eventually crash the software or application. So now we know the problem. Now, what is the solution? Coroutines is the solution for this problem. Okay, coroutines are actually lightweighted thread. So coroutines uses very less resources. So if you have multiple coroutines, all of these coroutines will use very, very less memory and you can communicate between these coroutines very easily. So there are very less chances that you will run into out of memory exception because coroutines are lightweighted threads and all of these threads are used from a thread pool. So let's say we have multiple threads here, T1, T2, T3, T4 and so on. Multiple threads are there. This is a thread pool. Now we need to know that how this thread pool helps in coroutine and why coroutine does not take lot of resources and how come coroutines work in such less resources. So for that, we need to understand the working of coroutine, how it works actually. So whenever we want to execute a piece of code, we start one coroutine. This coroutine will take one thread out of this thread pool. Okay. Now we got T1, which is coming out of this thread pool. So for some amount of time, our thread pool will only have T2, T3, T4 and so on. We took T1 out of this thread pool. Okay. Now coroutine will execute the piece of code we wanted to execute in this thread. Once our code execution is completed, we will get the output. And once we got the output, we will put back this thread into the thread pool again. So then again, our thread pool condition will be like this. So for executing some task, we will start a coroutine which will take one thread out of our thread pool. Okay. Then for example, we had these four threads in our thread pool. So T1, our coroutine took out of the thread pool, executed the piece of code in this thread. And then once our code is executed completely, we got the output we wanted. We will put back the thread again into the thread pool. Okay. 
we'll put back this thread again here and then again our thread pool condition will look like this so in coroutine case we no need to start multiple threads again and again we can utilize these threads only in multiple coroutines whenever any coroutine will run it will take some thread from our thread pool and once the execution is complete it will again put back the thread in the thread pool so let's say after this task again we started another coroutine this coroutine c2 can again take one thread out of this thread pool and after piece of code executed again we can put the thread in the thread pool okay that's how coroutine works with thread pool so coroutine will always take the threads from the thread pool and after the code is executed we will again put back that thread in the thread pool and it can be again reused so no need to recreate okay reusing is the practice which coroutines follow here so multiple coroutines can utilize the threads from the thread pools and that's how with very less resources coroutines can execute multiple piece of code and it can significantly improve the speed of execution in very less memory that's why we should use coroutines over threads and that's why you must have seen and used also coroutines in your android application because our phone devices has limited memory and we should be efficiently using that memory and coroutines are the best way in today's age to utilize the phone's memory efficiently now the coding part so i have created this project in intellij and we just need to add the coroutine dependency we can just sync the project for now you can avoid the coroutine syntax i will tell you how to use the syntax in detail in upcoming videos but for now just see that how lightweight coroutines are how easily we can create multiple coroutines okay so let's say we use one method of coroutine run blocking and within this we can just use one function repeat and let's say we want to start 100 coroutines okay so we just need to add here some piece of code for example we just want to print the coroutine and its number and let's try to run the project so we can see that all of these coroutines are started 100 coroutines and very lightweight very easily we started now let's do one thing let's measure the time taken in coroutine case okay so let's create one function coroutine and inside this add this piece of code now we are going to add kind of a million repetition here and let's try to measure the time taken by this function to execute this piece of code so we have one inline function measure time milliseconds and within this we can write our function and we can take in one variable okay we can add one print statement that this much time it took to execute this piece of code let's run the program and we can see that and we started these many coroutines and it just took these many milliseconds now let's do the same thing with thread so for that let's create one new class new thread extend it with thread override run function and let's create one function threads and within this function let's do the same thing we need to start our thread so we created one class thread and then we are repeatedly starting one new thread for almost a million times so this is the time taken for our coroutine part we can just add it here now let's comment it and let's start threads okay now let's run it and we can see that it is still running and it's still taking some time and we will see that there is some huge difference between the time taken by coroutines and the threads still it is running still it is executing and let's see how much time it takes and we will calculate the difference okay so i think it's about to complete 
and yes we can see that it took these many milliseconds so let's add it here so we can see this is a huge difference coroutines to run a million coroutines just took 942 milliseconds and if we are trying to execute 1 million thread it took 34,870 milliseconds which is a huge difference so now I hope you understand that why we should use coroutines over thread. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like my content, please like, share and subscribe. And also please share my videos to your friends. And I will see you in the next video.